Hey guys, my name's Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and I'd like to welcome you all back to the table for another drawing video. In today's video, we're going to be drawing three traditional style tattoo flash ideas, and we're going to be doing that using the iPad Pro. Now, before I get into today's video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel out. And if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss new videos when they come out. So to start off with, we are doing a traditional style dragon head. All right, so to start off with for our dragon head here, I'm going to draw an oval. Now this oval is pretty much going to give you the shape of the head. Uh, constructing these dragons is almost the same as constructing a Japanese style dragon. Very, very similar. Uh, these are like those uh, old school Sailor Jerry style dragons. So drawing in our center line there and our eye line. And then just throwing in a couple of uh, large circles for the eyes. They're a little bit more cartoony on these old school dragons. Now coming across to the left and slightly up. We'll just add in a large circle and then two smaller circles. And I might bring that one up just a little bit. That's going to give us our nose shape there. And then I'm going to come back with one, uh, two curves, and then bring that back around and down. Draw in this little curve at the bottom here. Okay, now at the back of this, I'm going to put in a little tooth. I'm going to put it in the back of a cheek like that. A little tooth towards the bottom. And we can sort of shape in the tongue here. I just like to do this sort of long squiggle. Connect it back up and put the tip of the tooth on the other side. So that's like a really simple way to do the tongue and the bottom lip there like that. Now behind the back of the jaw here, it's going to be this like triangular shape sort of thing. Maybe a little bit higher up would be good. Like this, that's sort of the ear. And you can add in these few little curves for the inside portion uh, of the ear there. Keeping it nice and simple, uh, like I said. Now for the horns for now, I just want to drop in a couple of long curve shapes. We can sort of elaborate on those shortly. Uh, now for our eyes, what I'm going to do is loop around the top section of the eye. And then just add in three little spikes like that. You can loop around for the middle and then loop back out again. And three little spikes. And that's going to give you the sort of eyebrows. Like I said, these traditional style dragons are so much more simplistic than the Japanese style ones. Make the eyes nice and solid. And again, they're quite cartoony. Now bringing a line from the nose up and back like this before dropping in your other eye. For the nose itself, I like to sort of bring a line around for the outside nostril. And then for this uh, outside one here, I like to sort of put in this little spiral. That's sort of how a lot of these traditional dragons look. It's a bit strange, but that's just the way they do them. And now behind that nostril, almost directly behind it, you can do a long wiggly line for your whisker. Connect up the bridge of the uh, mouth there, the bridge of the nose, and then a couple of little curves to connect up the inside of the mouth there. Now we need to add in the mustache. I like to come to the outside edge. Put all these uh, spikes coming around like so. You can add your other whisker in if you'd like at this point, which just comes from the other side of the nose there. And then your beard is going to be the same as the mustache is coming around like this. I like to sort of turn my page. And then as it comes up to the back, you can sort of go the other way. Like so. Okay. Now for your horns. You can pretty much come up, back in, and then like that. So you're adding this little section to the outside, and then completing the thickness on the back side there. You can add in these little curved lines for texture uh, if you'd like to. You don't have to, not all of these old school heads, uh, dragon heads had it. Depends how big you're doing this guy. And then for the top of the head, you can just put in like a really simple scale pattern 
which are pretty much just going to be like semicircles joining at the center. And because you're not doing too many and there's no curves, it's just a flat surface, you don't really have to worry about doing these too perfectly, okay? Now, last thing for our dragon head here is going to be the, uh, the hair at the back where the neck joins in. And for a traditional style design, pretty much just going to do these long lines coming around like this. Now, this is quite different uh, from how Japanese dragons look, how the hair looks on those guys, but this is more of a traditional styling. And generally speaking, once these hairs were uh, outlined, you would just come in with black and pretty much whip shade out from there, and that's going to give it the appearance of hair. So now that is it for the dragon head. All right, the next one is a traditional style rose, starting off with this egg shape. Roses are a really classic traditional tattoo design, so they're worth learning how to draw. Uh, starting off with this egg shape, I'm gonna cut through the middle of it with a line like so. And I'm just gonna add a waviness to the bottom of that line, really simple. I'm gonna cut uh, diagonally across this way and then across this way. It's gonna create like a V shape in the middle. And I'm gonna bring this one up and around and up and around and then on the outside of this you can create your waviness again okay that's just a long sort of wavy line for the outside of that now on this side it's a little bit more open I'm gonna add in an extra little fold like so okay uh, I might make that a little bit bigger so just adding another diagonal line and another little wavy bit there that's going to create another little fold uh, in your rows. I'm connecting these portions up. Now for the center of the rows, I'm going to put in a little oval to start with. And I'm going to follow it around like so. For this outside portion of the rows, it's going to have like a little uh, spiral. For the inside portion, I should say. Drop down the center like this. Drop down the outside like that, and then the other side pretty much just comes back down uh, into where that joins up there. So that's going to give you the main sort of center portion of your rows. And now to add your petals in, it's sort of pretty straightforward. They're just these long sort of wavy lines that come out from the center there. And it's all just about playing with shapes until you find ones that you'd like. Some of them can be a little bit more bumpy like so, and then some of them are going to be a little bit more wavy. I do try to keep in mind that the petals that are at the back of the rows, they're going to be a little less visible than the ones at the front, just a little bit because of the angle that we're seeing it from. So try to keep that in mind when you're doing uh, the back petals of your rows there. And then for your leaves, we're going to do really simple sort of traditional style leaves. I'm going to draw like a little peak like this. Add in this outside edge, which is just like a... Uh, Pretty much like a very small leaf shape towards the tip. And then you can come around with these little overlapping lines. And you sort of want to do that on both sides. And that's going to create a really traditional style leaf. And you can sort of do a few of these in different areas. I never really want them to cross directly through the flower. So I might turn it a little bit and get a different angle on it. That way they don't directly cross through each other. It just looks too symmetrical. And with a, a rose being an organic uh, subject matter, I don't want things to look too perfect, or too symmetrical. It kind of looks, looks a bit odd. But pretty much filling in your leaves wherever you'd like to. Now from here, if you'd like to, you can go ahead and add in uh, some of these smaller leaf shapes like so. And you can also add in some thorns or they're sort of like bits of branch, I guess, like these long twig parts. And that's going to give you your traditional style rose, essentially. And we've got one more design to do before the end of the video. However, I do have a little bonus at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, we are going to start off this one with an oval. And this is going to be a traditional style sparrow. So this is another really traditional, uh, this is like a sailor tattoo design, so it's really old school. Uh, we're going to sort of create a teardrop for this one. So start with an oval and turn it into more of a teardrop shape. And then towards the back, we can come out 
in either direction for a tail like this. We can come down the front. I like to follow this curve at the bottom around like this and then bring it back like so. This is going to create our little head. At the very front of this, you can just add in a little circle. That's going to give you an eye, maybe a little bit smaller. And then pretty much right in front of that, a little triangle for your beak. It's going to be a very simplistic style, uh, more traditional style design. Now to give you the top of the body here, you come around from where the head is and pretty much come down the back of the bird like so. That's going to give you uh, the sort of two colors down the back. Now to split the tail up, I'm going to come down from one side like this to about there. And come down from the other side to join into that spot in the middle there. And then in the middle of this, create the center. I'm going to go one, two, three, line, dot. And that's going to create uh, some little feathers on the inside of the tail that tend to look really nice. Now to add in your wings, I'm going to come to about this point. And you want to do it off the back of the bird, not off the belly. Uh, so come to about here, just the end of the neck onto the shoulder. You can curve out, create a little uh, elbow portion, and then curve back this way. Okay. And then you want the outside line to sort of follow that shape back as well. So it's kind of like a long S curve on the outside and on the inside. All right. And you're going to do the same thing for the other side, making sure that the other one is just a little bit shorter. Now at the top of each wing, you're going to start from about here and add in these little curve bits coming back towards the body. These are the sort of first feathers on the joint there. This is going to create that uh, sort of more rigid point to the wing. And same with the outside of the other wing there. You can make that top line of the wing nice and solid now. And then for the feathers, it's really simple. You're going to come out to the end and curve back. And then you're just going to create these overlapping curves that create the feathers of your wings pretty much all the way back to there. You can do the same thing on the other side, like this. Creating these little curves that come all the way back to the edge of the wing. And then for the top of the body, you can join the head and come up into this back part of the tail there. That wasn't very smooth. Let's try that again. Come like this. There we go. Come into there. So the top portion is going to be a different color. And then you come around for the belly. And up to the front like that. Give the eye. And there you have it. That is a traditional style sparrow or swallow. Again, another really uh, sort of famous, iconic nautical style tattoo. And a really popular traditional style tattoo. Now that is three traditional style tattoo designs. Now stick around for another couple of minutes and let me give you guys this little bonus. Now, before we get into that bonus, I want to give you guys a quick look at my latest offering in terms of digital brush sets for use in Procreate on the iPad Pro or any other compatible iPad devices. Now, this is the Big Cat brush set with over 45 hand illustrated stamp brushes for use in Procreate. This one comes with it all. It comes with head designs, full body big cat designs, as well as lots of different claws and sketch brushes. I really think you guys are going to enjoy this one. Big Cat Brush Set is out now, exclusively available at daggetdesigns.com.au, link in the description. Right guys, so here's the bonus. I'm now going through and lining uh, this traditional rose. I've gone ahead and started on a new layer and I'm using the mono line brush, which comes stock with uh, Procreate. This essentially gives you the same line weight all the way through, the same line thickness, uh, which is great for doing traditional style work. Generally speaking, traditional style tattoo designs will only use one line thickness. They sort of don't change it up uh, too much with different line thicknesses. Usually it's just the one lining size. So I'm just going ahead with this mono line 
and tracing over my initial sketch for the rose here. And then we'll go ahead and color it, which I was requested to do so. That's why I'm doing this little uh, bonus section. I tend not to color and outline stuff on Procreate, but I figured I would do that for this video for you guys. All right, once we've done our outline, I'm just going to unselect or toggle off the sketch. So now you can see we have a really clean outline. Now for coloring on Procreate, I like to duplicate my outline a few times. Everyone's gonna do this in a different way and it depends if they're closed shapes or open shapes. So an example of that would be this petal is a closed shape. There's no gaps where the line work breaks up. Uh, whereas these little bits are open shapes. They go into themselves there. So that's going to really determine how you go ahead shading and coloring. But if they're all closed shapes, then I like to duplicate my outline. I'll go to the second one and I'm going to select some sort of shading brush. Uh, we can use the soft airbrush for this. It's going to give you this sort of look. I like to use, uh, I like to use something a little bit grainier like this that just has a little bit more of the watercolor sort of feel to it to do my black shading. And then you can go ahead and uh, go to this little select toggle and turn it on to automatic. So now basically when you touch a section that's closed off, it'll select only that section. It'll highlight it in blue. Now we are black shading here. I'm gonna start off with all of our main uh, leaves here. So just selecting the outside portion of the leaves, then hitting the brush. And that's gonna do it so that you can only color in the sections you've selected. And now I'm just going to do a bit of black shading pretty much off that center vein, like so. And you want it to have a feathered soft edge, kind of like watercolor. This is going to give it a really sort of authentic um, watercolor painted tattoo flash look. Okay. So this is how I would start with my black shading here. Now I typically don't like to draw full illustrations on the iPad. I sort of like to use it for sketching and thumbnailing. Uh, before doing real sort of uh, traditional art, hand-painted stuff. But it can be useful to know how to do this uh, occasionally. Now for these leaves here, you can either do them solid black or you can go ahead and go in with a color. I think I'm gonna do this one, this one. I'll do all four of them solid black because they're not touching onto any other bits of black shading. You just don't wanna muddy things up. Now we can go back in and select a few more areas. I'll go with these side petals first. I'm going to come in from the center moving outwards and make sure there's that sort of uh, feathered out section. Selecting this petal, this petal. I'll come here, add in this little round bit at the bottom and just under here as well and select that last petal. Now the reason you don't want to select petals that are right next to each other is because they'll cross into each other as you color. Now we can select the insides of here Add a little bit of black to the base of those. Now the outside of your rose color, this depends, uh, you know, how traditional you're going to go. I sort of like to do black for the outside color of the rose. I think it looks really cool. So you can sort of do black, but going with that traditional aesthetic, I will leave this feathered out edge to white there. Select the next little section. Again, leaving that little feathered out edge. Uh, in this case, you'll do two feathered out edges because they touch onto each other. And then one more here. So we've got the outside of the rose is black there, which is really nice looking. You can come into the base here, leave that top edge feathered out. And that's gonna be it for the outside uh, portion of the rose. Now we can get into color, that is the black shading done. So we're gonna to go to the layer that I did just underneath our blacks, which again is the outline of the rose. And now we can go ahead and start off with our leaves again. So I'm going through and selecting all of my leaves and I'm going to go to green and get sort of a darker green. Now, I don't like to go all the way to the edge here where the color is super saturated. I'll come across a little bit and that's going to give us a bit of a softer look. And we can make this a little bit bigger, come nearly to the edge. I like to leave that little bit of uh, white towards the edge there. Again, gives it that spit shaded watercolor sort of look that we're going for here. Okay, from here, I'm gonna switch over to red. Go for a slightly more saturated red. And I'm gonna select each petal. Do red from the inside out 
and I like to again leave that little white edge. Now, how much white you leave on your design is completely up to you. You can go straight to the wall with color. I wouldn't recommend it. It ends up giving it a new school or near traditional look. And if you're going for traditional, you don't really want to do wall to wall color. You can do it. You don't have to leave all of these gaps. I really like the way they look. It's kind of more of a uh, style preference depending on how you want your design to look. So selecting each section and then just filling it in with color. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's going to give you the inside of the rose as red. Now we're going to take a yellow or a sort of golden color. We'll come in and select all of our spines or thorns, whatever you want to call them. They can be solid yellow. They're too small to sort of put skin breaks in, so we don't really need them. And then we can select the outer bits of our rose. And I might take a very light purple color. And just come in from the sort of edges of it like this. This is going to give it a really nice lavender sort of hue on the edges. Looks really nice. Okay guys, that is it on how to draw three traditional style tattoo flash ideas. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought of today's video. Or you can let me know what you'd like to see in the next video and I can try to get around to it. Otherwise guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.